In this video, I wanted to discuss the combat applications for the shotgun. So this is the KS-7. Uh, it is a pump action. Now, first things first, uh, most of the time you're seeing people want to be away from the shotgun, including people that would use this for serious use in a jungle environment or a heavily wooded environment like I have here. Now, I'm in, a, I'm in one of my shooting lanes. It's a clearing, and I'm just using this video as an opportunity to mow down some grass. Uh, so I can have better feel to fire. What better way to do that than get practice? But anyways, so the preferred thing to get is a uh, semi-automatic uh, and start with like a drum or even a five round magazine. That's preferred. And the reason for that is because they can be reloaded just like a rifle and it's a lot quicker. Admittedly, it's a lot quicker. However, if you don't have a drum and all you have is magazines, this thing's going to have more right off the gate. So you know, it is slower to reload, you got to continually feed it, um, but, you know, it's, uh, it is an option for people. I don't want people to think that it's uh, not an option. Now, who would have this? Now, I would say the people to have this would be, A, a point man, and B, maybe an, a tail, a tail end person. And those are the people that are most likely to see the enemy really close most likely, unless you also have flanking uh, security, but there shouldn't be like a whole crew of just shotguns. I don't think it's universally applicable for everything. Now, what kind of ammo? Well, buckshot, double op buck or triple op buck. Uh, now, pretty much anything would work, I think, uh, but you could also use slugs. Uh, and when I say anything, I'm talking about pretty much any double op buck or triple up buck. It doesn't need to be a specific brand like, you know, the flight uh, flight control or whatever, the stabilizer that Federal has out there or anything too fancy or copper plated. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, but double up buck is double up buck as long as it's uh, pushing a good velocity of about 1300 feet per second or more. I would say that's going to be your best bet. Now, if you can get three inch, uh, that might be good. Uh, if it's a magazine loaded shotgun, that would be good to have three inch, get as much uh, ammo as you can down range as possible. Now, if you're looking at getting volume, like the area, the affected area being greater, then go with the cheapest stuff you can find, all right? Or if you can load your own for really cheap, then do that. Uh, but, you know, point men or people that are highly likely to initiate first contact with the enemy, uh, would they would be, uh, it would be a very good idea to get them a shotgun with a buckshot or, and uh, the reason is because meeting engagements. Uh, meeting engagements or even if you're the one being fired on first, it's important that you get rounds down and have a higher likelihood of hitting them, especially if you're doing what's called cover shooting, which is shooting at the most likely spots where the enemy is concealing himself or using cover, because they have to expose themselves somehow. Even if it's just the weapon, if you can still hit that weapon, then that's that's good, and especially if it's something like a gas block that could render it uh, harmless, so to speak. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demonstrate a meeting engagement with a shotgun. It's gonna, it's gonna consist of uh, basically unloading the magazine, just like a regular RTR in a meeting engagement, uh, a reactive contact in a meeting engagement. You're dumping your magazine as effectively as you can into that enemy. Only crouch as much as you need to in order to still maintain uh, visual contact with uh, your threats, um, but you don't want to just stay standing all the time if you don't have to. If you can get lower, then get lower, but don't go all the way prone if you don't have to, all right? So anyways, Let's go ahead and run through this. So it'll be fire, reload, fire again, and reload and get to cover. So I'm the meeting engagement guy. Contact point. Loading. And there you have it. So I had a hard time with this because these shells, if you uh, if you try to uh, fire and rack them too fast, they get stuck, and uh, they get you get a stuck uh, casing in the chamber, and you're not going to have very much luck of getting it out. 
without, you know, a little bit of work. So that only happens with the practice stuff, like the little bird shot. Any high brass stuff that I've never had that happen to. So it may be an issue of maybe oiling up the brass a little bit or maybe replacing the extractor in the extractor spring. I don't know. But anyways, point is here, if you're going to be uh, giving a point man a shotgun, then you probably also want to give him a pistol as kind of a, a backup or maybe have him sling a rifle as well. Uh, but when they're on point in thick vegetation, go to the shotgun and then when it's open or they're providing cover elsewhere, then put the shotgun away, pull out the rifle and, uh, you know, go to town. That would probably be the best thing to do instead of just having a shotgun and a pistol, but they are going to be carrying a good amount. So, you know, it's really up to the leader's discretion on that. But anyways, I'm going to get some more practice in so I can mow down this grass, but thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and you guys have a good one.